Good morning. Glad to see all of you here and those that are watching us by broadcast around the world. We hope today the Lord is going to bless you. We've been doing series of messages on getting the church ready for the return of Christ. Today is no exception. It will sound a little more psychological than you're used to, but that's what I do on the other side of things. And so uh, there is scripture there. We will give you the scripture backing what we're telling you. So let me pray first. Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you and I ask you, Jesus, to preach through me. Be the very spirit and the voice that comes through these lips. Help every hearer to, to hear you, uh, to be changed by what you have to say, and we'll give you praise for it in the precious name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Yes. The Bible said you need to be glad when you come into the house of the Lord. Amen. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about make up your mind uh, and manifest the things you have been waiting for. Now I want to, before we go to a slide, I want to, I want to give you a preface. I showed the people here a false prophet before the service began. He prophesies for money. He sits around in the middle of your prophecy. He will ask other people to tune in and He will give them a prophetic word. That's not how the Holy Spirit works. You see, the Holy Spirit gives these utterances as He wills, not as you will. And if you don't know that, what happens to you, uh, you'll go and you'll think that, well, He's speaking for God. Well, I can tell you very quickly, there's a lot of things when a false, when Satan you know, he's, he's the one that wants to imitate God, but he does that, and there's always a different spirit behind it. And listen to me, any time that God speaks to you and it's going to be chastisement, it's going to be in love. It won't be somebody giving you their version of you. And that's what I want to talk about today. God's version of you. It's not what I say, not what I think, not what you think about me or, or you say about me. It's of what God sets about us, and He's the change agent. He's the one that makes us what we are, what we should be, and, uh, and He's the one that does the work on the inside of us. But there are times when you go through things and your faith begins to drop because you're listening to things, doing things outside of the Word. You're not putting enough Word into your life and that kind of thing, and all of a sudden you go through a trial and it seems like you don't get a ready answer from the Lord. And then you'll go looking, and this is a problem. Now I want to tell you, for the church, I want you to hear me. There is a place for apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. But they don't go around doing it like you think they would. They are called to that. And they don't just do this for everybody for money. And if you get somebody doing that, run because that person is a, is a goat, not a sheep. Okay? Understand, God doesn't do those things. like As any prophet in the Scripture that ever spoke, never asked for anything. When Elijah had a servant, went out of the house chasing after a man that had money, and he took money and went back, and he got a rebuke from Elijah because he took money, and he said, God said, and you went out and, and you were... See, so there's all kinds of things in the Scripture that show you the era of that kind of thing in our generation. And there's a lot of people that chase it down. Listen to me. When you were about uh, 5 years old to 12 years old, your brain was being set to think about yourself in line with what your parents thought about you. If you had parents, and they would tell you when to get up, when to go to bed, when to eat, when to go to school, they told you things like that, right? And sometimes they'd have to bring correction. That correction sometimes was a little stiff, wasn't it? You know, most of us know what a woodshed is. So anyway, having said that to you, you were raised up, and hopefully you were raised up by Christian parents. If you were not, then you don't have the foundations in you 
But you can get that. That's the good thing. You can get the foundations you need from Jesus Christ. He told me when my father was gone, when my father died, he said, I will be a father to the fatherless. And he has been ever since that time. So I want you to listen to me today as we, we talk about make up your mind. See, if you're allowing other people to make up your mind for you other than God, you're making mistakes. And those mistakes can cost you in every area of your life. There's, and, and you go in, there's a lot of psychological stuff that goes into that, and I'm not going into that today uh, very much anyway, just to tell you that there are things that happen with your, your identification. You, do you know who you are? Now, I'm not talking about a name. Do you know who you are? If you're in Christ Jesus, you're a Christian, right? A believer? You have all kinds of words that go around that. But if you don't or you're not sure, you can, you can put your hand right there on your stomach and say, I'm a believer and I believe in Jesus Christ. If it, if it feels false, you need to get with the Lord. If it feels true, then you know that you're in the right place and, uh, and you've got God in, in you. You know, he says, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. He gives you his Holy Spirit and He doesn't give you a mind that is going to fear. He says He gives you power and, and love and a sound mind. Anything that has anxiety in it is satanic. It comes from Satan. Satan is the fear monger that makes you begin to doubt everything, second guess yourself, can't make decisions. You get what the Bible says in James, uh, double-minded. Double-minded man is what? unstable in all of his ways. And so I want you to understand that. that, that appear, and listen, I don't want to sound sexist. That is the Word of God. He spoke to the men because the men actually ruled over the homes. And they were supposed to take the Word back to the home. Uh, so today we're going to try to explain some of this to you. And, and I hope that it's going to be meaningful and those that are watching that you'll listen to me. Stop letting people tell you who you are. Let God tell you who you are. And don't let anybody else. Uh, there's people with opinions. You know what they say about that. We're not going there in the pulpit. So anyway, having, having said that, I want you to know that you don't need somebody's opinion of you. You need the Word of God to change you into the, the image of Christ, to be like Christ, not to be trying to you know, find yourself. Look, you can find yourself in Christ. If you find Christ, you'll know who you are. If you don't find Christ, you don't know who the heck you are. You, you're all over the place. Your, your mind is everywhere and you're looking to everybody else. And these people today that like the false prophet, uh, he's selling prophecies to make you feel better about yourself. If you ask him to do something really spiritual, he can't do it. And that's, uh, that's just satanic. And that's, you know, you have to have the, the spirit of discernment. That comes from the Holy Spirit. And if you're in Christ, you'll have it. You have all of Christ, all of the Holy Spirit, all of the Father in you. And when you have Him, you get that Word in you and, and keep your faith built up so that the adversary can't assault you and make you feel less than what you are. Look, I'm a son of God. Like it or not. That means He has given me Salvation, through grace, had mercy on me. Yes, I was like everybody else. All of us were, were in sin, right? We came here with that problem. Nobody had to teach us to be a sinner. We came here with, uh, with that problem. We had to learn how not to give in to the flesh and to walk according to the Spirit. And that... Is, the Holy Spirit is required for that. You have to be born again. The Bible says Jesus told that uh, uh, to uh, Nicodemus. He said, you have to, you must be born again. Well, how do you do that? He goes through a silly thing about, you know, you can't go into the mother's womb a second time and that kind of stuff. This is, you understand, he was thinking like a man. When you have God's mind, you'll, you'll rise above that. He'll show you things you don't know. He'll teach you things you don't know have any clue about okay so today we're going to look at some things together we've got to come into this understanding we must come out of agreement with them those people 
satanic or otherwise, people in your lives that, that bring negativity and that kind of thing, look, cut yourself off from that. That feed is coming from hell. That negativity comes from Satan. It does not come from God. There's, there's nothing to rejoice in when you're around them. How many of you have ever been around people like that? And everything they had was a complaint or a murmur or something. And, and, and then they were always correcting everybody else and didn't have their own life together. Do you understand what I'm saying? Those kind of people you don't want to be around because they are uh, vitriol in and, and, and their spirit. And that spirit's going to try to project upon you. And they're hoping that you will bow down to that spirit that's inside of them. That's why Satan puts his, his spirit inside the souls of men. He wants people to bow down to him. And he uses people to do that. Amen. Yeah. Uh, if you've ever had a boss, you know what I'm talking about. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, it says in the Amplified Classic Edition, it says, Inasmuch as we refute arguments and the theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God, and we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. So, now I want you to understand what he's saying. Your thoughts... Your ID, you know, your identification has, a, has an internal voice. That voice was created between uh, 5 years old and 12 years old. And that voice listened to all the criticisms in the world. You are not good enough. You're not going to... We'll, we'll look at some of that in a minute. But I, I want you to hear me on this. That voice has to be put out. You cannot listen to that voice because that voice is the voice of ruin. When you were a child, you acted like a child. You did as a child did, right? But when you got up and you become adult, you couldn't wait for that to happen, right? But, but you understand adult doesn't mean an age. It, it's an internal thing that happens to you. A responsible thing. When you find out that you're not the only one in the world and everything has to revolve around you and that you have to start ministering to the needs of other people. Amen? Amen. So having said that, we're going to go on. I don't want to make this a long, drawn-out thing. We have to decide we're tired of envy and jealousy and bitterness and uh, rising up in us. How many people have a r people around you that will cause these things to happen to you? You get envious because they've got more than you. Or they look like they're doing better than you and that kind of thing. That, By the way, uh, if you go back to the Ten Commandments, that's a form of covetousness. Wanting something somebody else has, but you don't have it. And it actually has a you know, covetousness in it. So, uh, bitterness. Jealousy. Are you jealous of people? You know. Well, their their lives better than mine, and you know they've got a better car, a better house, better their their children act better than mine. You know whatever it is that you do, that jealousy, bitterness. You know bitterness. We talked about that in, in a sermon or two uh, recently, and so in the in the process of bitterness getting a stronghold in you, what happens is is that it takes over your character. You can, when somebody's got a bitter root in them, they're always bitter. They're always bitter. Everything that comes out of them is negative. Murmuring, complaining, you know, fussing at people all the time about uh, this thing and that thing. And again, most of these people would tell you how to live your life and they, they don't have their lives together. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So when we make up our mind that we do not want these spiritual dynamics ruling in our life and we decide that we want the fruit of righteousness to be in our life instead of the fruit of, of sin, God will meet us in that decision and make, make us free from those things. But there is a decision to be made. There are people that you will walk away from in your life and they're just not good for you. Listen to me. I'm not telling husbands and wives this is a license to divorce. If you've already hooked yourself up uh, 
you're hooked up as far as God is concerned until death do you part. So don't, don't go down to the judge. He can't make everything all right. And if you didn't deal with it in that relationship, the next one won't be any better. Okay, you've got to deal with your problems before you take them off and, and put them on somebody else. Well, they're, going, they're different than, no, they're not different. They're human. And if you do the same old thing, you're going to get the same old thing. That's just insane to think it's going to be any diff different the next time around. In Philippians, it says this in the third chapter, in the th uh, verse 13 and 14, it says, I count not myself uh, to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things which are before. I press toward the mark of the high calling and God and Christ Jesus. Now listen, what, what he's saying, you can't be living out of your past. In another place in the Scripture, the same author tells us if we put our hand to the plow and look back, it makes us unfit for the kingdom. What that unfitness is, is a mental attitude that is expressed through us that is not of God. It's something that has materialized, caused strongholds in the brain, and the brain begins to operate out of all of that stronghold, that all that damage. Now, if you're damaged, you need to have a healing of your mind. You need to take up that, uh, you know, something against those strongholds and command those things out of your life. If it's relationships outside of a marriage relationship that are, are uh, difficult and that kind of thing, you don't, have to, you don't have to sit around and put up with junk. I should have heard a really loud amen there. You don't have to put up with Satan's junk. And remember, you know, you, well, is it all spiritual, Brother Ron? Absolutely. One side or the other, it's spiritual. It's not psychological, I want to tell you. He gets into the mind just like Jesus does. But if, you, if Jesus is there, I promise you, He's going to help you to cast down vain imaginations. Isn't it imaginings that get you in trouble? What, you, you try to think... I have people all the time, well, I know what you're thinking. There is not a chance in heaven that you know what I'm thinking. Unless I open my mouth, you don't. You're guessing. And a lot of these prophets out there are doing the very same thing. They don't know what's going on with you. But they're listening to a voice, but they don't know which one it is. So listen, if it comes across with condemnation and negativity and stuff like that, and if it's not building you up, God wouldn't tell us in the Word of God, don't let anything come out of your mouth except words that's building up for the hearer, and then turn around and do anything different than that. Amen. So you've got to know and have the Word of God in you, and it has to be strong and mighty in your, in your heart to be able to oppose the adversary and you know where he comes. He's, you know what he's going to. He, you know his voice better than the Lord's voice. You know what he says to you. Amen. Amen. So uh, you've got to you've got to put these things behind you and not live out of your past. Your past has got all kinds of wounds and difficulties, and that, put it behind you. And you can do that right now. The next time, listen, there's a word in, in psychology that I use. It is sublimation. Do you know what sublimation is? Probably not. Sublimation is where you have a negative thought that comes into your brain and you replace it with something positive or something that is substantially faith building. Sublimation, okay? So not all psychology is bad. Thank you. Uh, for those that don't think you need those. <laughs> So today we can stop agreeing with the enemy. Do you agree with that? You can stop agreeing with the enemy. It is a choice. Don't allow your mind to say, well, I don't want to hurt their feelings. And that kind of, Look, it ain't going to hurt their feelings. It's your feelings you're not taking care of. Uh, you know, so today, why not choose life and blessing over this sin, sickness, and disease, right? And the things that get into your mind and heart that, that make you... Feel bad about yourself. Now, I know some of you have been through bad things. I, I went through bad things. I had parents that weren't perfect. And I forgive them and I wish them well and they are deceased now and they have no more power over me. 
So, understanding, I love them, but I didn't, I didn't like everything they did. I love you. I don't like everything you do. That's incumbent on me to help you to do better. And that's why I do what I do, because the Lord called me to do that. So anyway, would you stand in front of someone while they're, and they're delivering a whole heap of unhealthy, insane, abusive, damaging, and disgusting versions of you and your life? And would you listen to that? How long will you do it? Now, I want, I want you to get healthy here, and all of you that are listening. The healthiest thing you could do is, is say, I'm not listening to you. Disconnect and carry on with what you were doing before that came along. Amen. Stop the adversary. The Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee. Well, I, I'll tell you, that happens, and it happens this way. And this is what it looks like when you say, I'm sorry, I'm not going to listen to that. And you turn around and turn your back on them and go back to what you were doing. The devil didn't have his way. And they don't know most, all, you know, more often than not that they are demonized. And they're doing things because that's the voice in their head and it has taught them over the years to be just like that. And so, having said that to you, God wants you to have a healthy, sound mind, the mind of Christ. He doesn't want you going around in some sort of, uh, you know, difficult situation through life thinking, I'm just no good or I'm never going to be this. You, you know how that sounds, right? Anyway, there's absolutely no need for you to, uh, to accept another, another's version of who you are and what your life is about and, uh, and that kind of thing. The only other one that I ever listened to, and that's why I say to you, I don't want anybody's opinions. Opinions can be kept to themselves. It isn't that I don't care about people. Most often, those opinions do not come from Christ. And most of the garbage that I have to listen to every day, coming into my office, garbage, 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 you know. <laughs> and then after about, you know, seven or eight times, I'm saying, are you ready to listen now? Well, that's not something they're used to doing except that voice in their head. And that voice is taking them down that same path over and over and over, and they have broken relationships, they've got hurt feelings, they've got you know, losses of jobs because they can't hold a job, and that kind of thing. And all that kind of stuff happens because they're not listening to God. They're, they're listening to whatever everybody... And Now, let me ask you a question. The last time you were hurt, did you run to somebody else and pour off all the vinegar in you on that person? Is that what God says to do? Never. Because see, what you did is you just became an evangelist for Satan. You went out and you actually sowed some discord and you took that, that thing that happened to you and you put it in the ears of somebody else and you caused them to stumble at that point. Can you imagine that you're running around becoming a stumbling block like that? Do you think that God's happy with that kind of thing? No. You know... People that get married and they run home to mom and daddy and tell them all the things that go wrong with, with the family. Look, shut up. The, the best thing, if you can't control yourself, shut your trap because you're actually sowing seeds of discord. You're causing other people to have a... And you know mom and daddy are not going to be subjected. Or I mean objective. They're going to be subjective. They're going to say, you did that to my daughter? You, and they'll give you some expletives. So you, you understand how that... And, and you don't run to people that don't have the kind of counsel that you need. Mom and Daddy are not going to give you... They, they're going to take a side immediately. You know? And so when you do that, you've actually poisoned them towards somebody else. You've caused their heart to grow dark in that area. And then you cause them to judge that person based on your testimony. Are you listening? I'm trying to get you ready for the coming of Christ and you can't continue to do those kind of things and think that you're going to be ready when He comes. That's absolute fact. So anyway, 
I don't have to accept somebody else's version. You don't either. Listen, the only version you need is the one that Christ said. He gives you your purpose. He gives you your identity. It's in Him. He calls you son or daughter of God. And He says that now. And if, you're, if you receive anything from anything lesser than God, then you're not going to be able to stand against the wiles of the adversary. Somebody will come along, they'll say something, you know, you know, you know how it is. You can, get a, you can get a review on your job and it says right here, uh, did good, did good, did good. Needs improvement, did good. What did you see? Needs improvement. You didn't even see did good, did good, all the things that were for you. You saw the, where you need improvement. And every time you do that, you, you discount the good in your life. Ever done that? Okay. You don't have to raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> we, again, and we don't need to agree with the enemy. If you know who you are, there's no need to try to convince another person who you are and what you stand for. If they don't get it and they don't want to, it really is none of their business, right? I'm a Christian. Most people know that. If you want to hear more about it, I'll give it to you. If you don't, that's, that's up to you, right? Now, if I was up here and I was a jack leg and, and I, I said, well, I'm a jack leg and I'm going to give you my opinion and I'm going to tell you what I don't like and what I do like. And you know, you're going to get all in that kind of stuff and the next thing you know, people are not getting close to you and the, the reason they're not is because of that kind of vitriol stuff that comes out of you. It's not of Christ. If it were, the love of God would be coming out of you. You would be able, you wouldn't be offended or easily offended anyway. Understand that. And you don't have to stay around for somebody to beat you up verbally because they don't know who you are, right? Now, you, you come to church to hear the Word of God preached to you so that you can make up your mind about where you stand on the basis of the Word that is being spoken to you. I can't do that for you. You can sit here and sleep through it. But I want to tell you something. That would not behoove you. You won't change doing that kind of thing. All right? So, understand that if you stand there with somebody that's abusive and they're arguing with you and that kind of stuff, that individual, you're going to get damaged. How many of you have ever been damaged by somebody's speech? If you do this, you have serious problems in setting boundaries. You need to set boundaries. I'm not going to put up with this anymore. No, we're not going to have that conversation. Every time I get around you, you want to start something. We're not going to have that. If, if you continue to do that and don't respect my boundaries, then we, we get, uh, you know, you just, if you saw a rattlesnake in my driveway out there, would you go talk to it? He means business. He's threatened by you. That's the reason he's speaking like that. That threat is anxiety. It's fear. And when you get too close to him, what's he going to do? He's going to bite you. You're going to be the one that's damaged by what, you know, because you don't know how to set a, a, a boundary around you. Does that make sense? If it's, if it's biting, fighting, arguing, step away from it. That thing's going to damage you. And you don't need that damage, I promise you. How many of you have ever rehearsed hurt over in your mind and just to the point that you were sick. You didn't have to do that. You didn't have to stand there and take it. You don't have to do that. You know, there are people that I understand. Say, I'm in the business, I have to listen to this stuff. People want to bring their arguments and they're, you know, take my side over their side and that kind of, look, no, I don't take sides. I'm going to, when, you, when you hush your mouth after I find out what's going on with you, I'm going to tell you what you need to do, and it's up to you whether you do it. And I'm going to do, I'm going to do that on the basis of spiritual counsel, godly counsel. And there's a lot of difference in that and what you'll find in worldly counsel. Okay? Everybody going to get their boundaries up now? You know, we can go into the world, but we don't have to be of the world. Understand that. And the world has no place in us. 
and that we don't have any agreement with it. We're not supposed to sit down with it, not supposed to take sides with it. Don't let it, you know, start feeding you the, the negativity and stuff that comes out of it. The next thing you know, this, is, this goes beyond cursing. It says, you know, those corrupt communications, those are corrupt communications. They will uh, make you have bad morals. Okay? So, your ego is one of the problems, though. Because if you don't have a sound uh, spiritual experience, your ego is going to tell you you're less than a, you ought to be. It's going to tell you that you, you'll never be anything and that kind of stuff. Anyway, it li loves to fight with you. It needs, it, it'll give you all the things that you were raised with from, from 5 to 12. And you'll sit there and you'll hear mom and daddy fuss in your mind and every, every time you get into a situation, you'll hear mom and daddy's voice. You know what I'm talking about? You need to hear God's voice. You've got to replace that voice with God's voice and put His Word in your heart, hide that Word in your heart so that you will become what He created you to be. They were, not your, they were propagators, but they were not creators. God had to put that spark in you in the womb. And so, having said that to you, He's your Father. If you've accepted Him, He's your Father. Start listening to Him. Stop listening to yourself. Stop all that negative self-talk in your mind. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. Your ego loves this because it will trick you into thinking that you can win this argument. How many times do you get in an argument with yourself? Inside. This thing is a whole, I mean, it's like you're a whole different person talking to yourself back and forth and that kind of you can't imagine how many people do this kind of stuff and they do it on a regular basis and that's the reason that Satan is able to manipulate them like he does they cannot stand because they're listening to those voices not God's voice okay so your ego loves this again it'll trick you into thinking you can win that argument oh no that you can convince it to resolve the issue oh no and that you'll receive peace after having done this, uh, this struggle with, uh, with yourself. This is so untrue. You can't have a fight with yourself and win. <laughs> Go punch yourself in the nose and see how that feels. No, don't do that. I'm just, no, I'm just... But listen to me. You can't have that going on in your head every day and think that you're going to be healthy, mentally healthy. You won't be. Spiritually healthy, you won't be. Okay. Uh, your ego will con uh, keep coming back to you again and again and again, just like any abusive person would. So, uh, and it just doesn't go away. It wants to project fears and doubts and and uh, and you not finding peace within. So, the argument will continue to resurface and never be healed as long as you allow it. If you had a, a wound on your body anywhere and you just kept opening it up over and over and over again, you'd be in trouble. Your physical man would begin to get sick. Uh, bacteria and viruses can get in it and, and all of a sudden you've got a, a big problem. And the same thing happens to you when you have these internal arguments with yourself, your ego. Now there's, there's worse than that, a super ego. That's where you take it in the other direction. You know, you start using that negative like it's the truth. And let me tell you, when you get to that place, you need some real help. Come see me. Okay? <laughs> know that your ego is every bit as abusive as another dam damaging individual. You know that. You know I'm telling you the truth. You know the, the negative stuff you keep telling yourself. And you keep allowing it instead of shutting it up. No, I'm not going to listen to that. You have to be able by the Holy Spirit to have self-control and to be able to put the adversary in his place. Submit to God, resist him, and he will flee. He will go. You don't have to put, a, not put up with that kind of a speech from him. Nothing that he's going to say to you is anything that you want to hear. It's always going to be negative. Okay? So, 
if you can't disconnect and get away from them, you'll eventually give in and start agreeing with, uh, with the version that they have just spit out. And it takes your peace away. And by the way, that's not the way that relationships work. That's how they are destroyed. Okay? Inevitably, you keep hook hooking up with your ego and you'll end up do the, doing the same thing. If you keep listening to that voice and you're not replacing it, sublimating, uh, the, the, uh, sublimating the information with the Word of God, then what you're going to do is allow the adversary to continually bomb you in that place. It's a weak place in your life, in your mind. And if every time you, you allow it to happen, then it's gonna, he's coming back again and again. He comes to the weak spot every time. You know, he'll, he'll tempt you with something and then come back with condemnation. And, and, you know, he's coming to kill you. He does not like you. He's not somebody you need to be in agreement with. You need to be shoving him on down the road. Okay, take authority in the Word of God. Put him on, on you know, I'm submitted to you, God. Satan, you've got to go. Get off of my property. Out of my neighborhood. You know, don't, don't leave him around so he can come back. You know, it's like a dog or a cat that you fed. Do it once. You'll show, you'll, they'll show up on your doorpost every, every morning. You can't feed Satan and, and think he's going away. You have to make him sorry that he came to you. Get the Word of God in you so that you can spit it out like a machine gun. Take him down and say, out the door. You know. So and eventually you'll be so worn down that you'll accept and agree with that inner dialogue that I'm worthless and I'm a failure. You ever seen people like that? I see them every day. Agreement with the enemy of your soul sounds something like this. I'll never, and here's the things we'll fill it in with, have a good marriage. I'll never get out of financial trouble. I, I, you know, I'll never you know, get the job or lose this weight or, or be good, a good mom, etc., etc. It goes on and on. I'm always, here we go, Dumb, stupid, late, worried, unqualified, wrong, talking too much, etc., etc. You kind of get this idea, right? Has that ever come to your house? I'm talking about up here. If it does, you see, the only way to get rid of it is to start resisting it. Don't feed it, because what you feed is going to grow. Feed the good and starve the bad. Amen? Amen? Okay, this kind of thinking will always be punctuated with these kind of downward thoughts. Always. It's always that way. Here's what we need to be replacing it with. I'm cleansed and I'm forgiven. Colossians 1.14 When the adversary, you know good. You know the song. You know good, you know good. Now you stop listening to that. You might like the, the melody, but you don't know that the message is getting in your head. Okay? Don't tell me I'm no good. <laughs> My God says that I'm good. He made me good. So I'm assured that God will work out everything for my goodwill and His glory. Romans 8, 28. You know you're going to die? Ah, uh, not by your hand. I go home when He calls me home, not one minute sooner. And everything that people say to me about, you know, you're going to die, you know. Or, you never going to amount to anything. Do you know how many times I heard that growing up? I'm going, uh, is that supposed to be encouraging, Mom? <laughs> Are you listening? <laughs> I can find mercy and grace to help me in my time of need. That's in Hebrews 4.16. Then, God's not going to help you. God's not going to, you know, He, he doesn't care about you. Have you ever heard these things? I'm hoping you're listening, y'all that are watching out there too, that these are things that you must resist. 
They are simply against the Word of God. The Word of God is the truth, not a truth, the truth. And when we set the truth as our, our guardian and our guide, then we're going to live a different kind of life. All right? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Well, the doctor said I need to behave myself and slow down. I actually had that false prophet say, you need to slow down. Uh, we got out and walked two miles one day and a mile and a half one day and then half mile one day and you know, and then I came in and I felt pretty good. Just a little sore around the hips, but I, I felt pretty good. I, I, that's exactly what I said when I started my walk. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I didn't have chest pain. I came in. I felt pretty good about it. And I sat down and ate a good meal. <laughs> I can approach God with freedom and confidence. The Bible says in Ephesians 3.12, you know, He says you can come boldly before His throne of grace to receive mercy and help in your time of need. Now, why would you run anywhere else? He's the one that can do something about it. And you're running to some lesser source that can do zero about it. You know, I have to tell that to people all over the world. You know, look, did you start with God before you started hindering me? <laughs> it isn't that I want to help you. I can help you know what He said. If you don't have that in your heart, you need to get it in there. Okay? So, uh, declare your faith and believe God. Let nothing move uh, you. He's there. He's waiting for you. You have to put your trust in Him. Listen to me. You can't trust Him if you're sitting around listening to the adversary because the adversary is going to cast a shadow over everything that God says. He won't do that for you. You know what kind of a person you... So he just sold you a different bill of health. And if you accept that kind of thing, you don't resist Him and then you get nothing from, the, from God because that in itself is what we're going to talk about in this next Scripture. Uh, anyway, today is in a fresh renewal of your faith in Him. Believe and don't doubt. Don't doubt. That's what God said. He's no respecter of persons. What He will do for one, He'll do for everyone. He loves the whole world. He didn't just die for a little handful of folks anywhere in the world that says they're a church. He loved the whole world. He paid the sin debt for everybody. But not everybody's going to accept it because they're listening to that other voice. James 1, 6 and 8 says, tells us the person that is double-minded, believing and doubting, believing and doubting is unstable in all he does. You can't believe and doubt at the same time. That makes you insecure. Amen? So, uh, choose carefully today where you're, uh, you're making your agreements and with whom. Challenge your thinking. You need to do this on a regular basis. Is what I'm thinking right now what God said about me? Now, He's my Creator. And He knows better than I do what He created me for. Uh, find agreements with the enemy. Uh, don't find uh, these. You know you have to challenge these agreements. Don't find agreements with the enemy of your soul and lay the truth of Scripture over those those lies that he's telling you. Okay, hold those truths and with the tenacity of a bulldog. When I when the Lord speaks something to me through the Word and it's it's spoken to a place where the adversary has had some hold at some point, he's going to have a problem with me. Because the Word of God's going to put it, be put in His face every time and, and I'm going to call Him a liar and He's the only one you can do that and not go to hell, okay? But anyway, <laughs> he, he is. He's the Father of lies. You can quote that Scripture if you want to do that and feel better about it, okay? And He never comes to you to tell the truth. Everything He says to you is, is poison. And He hopes you'll drink it, okay? So, you'll find stability and grace and move through your day when you start holding on to the Scriptures. And as again, I said, you know, hold on to it like a bulldog. Bulldogs, when they bite, don't usually let go until you pry the jaws apart. Anyway, Christ is your trustworthy anchor today. Rise up and begin to walk in victory today.
today. Make, make a decision, a quality, quality decision. I'm not going to allow these things in my mind. Don't sit around and say, well, the doctor said. Shut that mouth too because he was an in, uh, enemy of, of your soul. He is telling you what God did not say. He says to you what he thinks and what he was educated to tell you. Listen to me. He'll give you poison. Have you ever t had taken some of these medicines? Have you ever looked at what the Federal Drug Administration approves of? And it's got a laundry list like that on every one of them of what it can do to you and can kill you in cases. So if you start there, well, the doctor said, you put something ahead of God right there. I had to tell my doctor, well, that's what you say. Now, he didn't like that. Were you going against a medical advisement? No, see, you did. Uh, because my medical, my physician is Jesus Christ and He's going to heal me. And you don't know anything about that because you practice medicine. But when He heals, He doesn't practice. He just heals. And He doesn't withhold any good thing from them that love Him and are called according to His purpose. So you've got to understand the Word will, will get the adversary on the flight. You know, he, He's got to go south somewhere in a dry place or some, some, some place other than here, okay? Don't leave them in your neighborhood, okay? <laughs> I pray over every house in this neighborhood when I go walking and stuff like that, God, put your Holy Spirit in that house. Save them. If they're not saved, save them. Change them. Change their families. You know, bring revival to this whole community. Christ is trustworthy. Let's pray. Lord, may I be aware today of the thoughts that I choose to hang on to and nurse in my mind and my heart. Father, let me replace every thought that comes from any other source with Your Word. May I choose the truth of Your Word and walk in the strength and the dignity and the victory that that Word gives to me. And in the strong name of Jesus, I pray that for everyone listening as well. Let your spirit flow through the body of Christ now, those that are watching. And help them, Lord God, to walk in your truth, in the light of your word, in the victory that you have promised. And this we ask in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.